get underway. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Bob Woods, and you are watching and or listening to Social Selling Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, talking about social selling, business, uh, sales, and whatever else may come up in the conversation. My name is Bob Woods. I am a social business strategist at PeopleLinks, as well as the executive vice president of coaching and training at Social Sales Link. Ted, go ahead. I'm Ted Pedromo, and I'm author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business, Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business, and my company is Search Marketing Simplified, and I help companies with their, obviously, their search marketing. Very good. Great. And I'm Michael De Groot. Great to be here. And I'm Chief Storyteller at StayingAliveUK.com. I help you share your stories on LinkedIn through social selling and whiteboard animation. That's me. Excellent. Very good. Very good. So um, anything, uh, anything breaking happening in LinkedIn land this week? I haven't actually come across anything personally. I don't know if you guys have seen any major changes or anything like that, but um, go ahead. Yeah, I've, I've uh, noticed a, a tiny little thing, and that is, um, you know, when you receive an invite from somebody and it either says, join me, or I want to join your network or something, mm -hmm. or it's a personalized one, mm -hmm. once you accept, the original message disappears, right? Yeah. That is, that's what... Yep. Well, it's back, right? The really? Average, yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. So if you've had a recent invite and you've accepted, go to that person's profile and look under the conversation that you've had with them, the messages, you know, or okay. when you got connected, whatever it's called. <laughs> the, little, the little card underneath your header card, mm -hmm. uh, inside there, it now keeps that original message, and I think it's something we asked for. So, yeah, it is something that that we asked for. Let me. Uh, I'm 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 going to pull open a a browser really quick because you have me insanely curious about this. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah those, it's those messages disappeared. It's like I need that. So I want to look at yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Uh. been a little while since I've accepted anyone so I may not be able to find it right all messages my connections my connections my connections no okay so it's not gonna work for me just because it, it's been a little while since I've accepted someone hmm well even if I look at a let me have a look at a one that was accepted a little while ago uh, I'll just somebody random that I accepted okay so let's see so my yeah. network connections so it's sort by recently added yeah so 14 days ago mm -hmm. uh, somebody sent me a personalized message and that message is there now under the relationship tab oh I see it too hey hey Wow. Yeah, there there it is. There it is. Wow, so that's something. Make that back for us, and that's great news. Thank that you, is. LinkedIn, if you're listening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, LinkedIn. Great yeah, if, if they catch us on, uh, on, on replay, which I'm sure everybody sits down and watches religiously this show on <laughs> LinkedIn. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, seriously, that is, that is good news. It's 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 actually good to be to, to be talking about a, a good a good move that LinkedIn has made, and, and they've been a, and they've been making other good moves too. So I mean, you know, it always seems like uh, that shows like this kind of descend into LinkedIn bashing, and and none of us no. on this show really like it when that happens. And I'm glad to be talking about good news from LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. So okay super useful to have that to you know so you've got the conversation when it first started you can go back i don't know 99 percent of them don't say any any personalized message but uh it's still good to remember that they didn't yeah <laughs> so your personalized yeah, exactly. message 
but uh, it's also great when you can look back through the history of conversation and that's yeah. what you want. And actually, that brings up uh, a, a good question that I had because I was, uh, I think it was last week, someone sent me a, um, a uh, generic invite. And I was trying to remember the process that Michael went through because I remember that he had a good process and I was trying to remember it. So uh, because you respond with a suggestion about, um, about customizing um uh, about customizing invites if you could just go through that again really quick just so i can refresh my memory more than yeah anything. sure i mean the only thing i do i said thank you for your invitation and i then say uh, i'm really curious what inspired you to connect to me that's right it's, mm -hmm. what inspired you to connect to me and then i share also i said you might find this useful too and i share a url which I've customized uh, like a bitly, but I've customized right. the title of it is why you should personalize <laughs> invitations mm -hmm. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so they kind of see in the URL, ah, okay. And they click through on that. It's a LinkedIn pulse post. And so they can read my reasons for why you should be personalizing your invites. Mm -hmm. And so that, yeah, that's all I do. That's all I do. And I would say the majority of them come back and go, hand up, you know, I got it. Yeah, sorry. I will mm. never ever do this again. You've you've put me right. I didn't realize. <laughs> you know, so they're really apologetic. And of course I will connect to them then when they sure. are like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's funny how people respond sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But it means it's real, right? It's not just click a button, right. accept, next, you know, it just makes the conversation. And you start off a conversation that way then as well. Mm -hmm. I have a message. When I send it out, I've added a paragraph recently. It says, please don't respond with the self-promotion. Tell me something interesting about yourself. And you yeah. wouldn't believe how many people tell us some interesting stories about themselves. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it's great. It starts a good conversation. It, yeah, that's, it, it, yeah, that's it, actually a good it, idea. That is a good one. And it's one that I use when I do presentations at networking events or training events. Mm -hmm. uh, because usually people are introducing to changing business cards. Right. And I ask them to say something to your neighbor that they would never find out about you. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't believe how everybody engages in conversation really quickly. Right. You know, because it's wow. like, what do you do? It's the normal question that everybody asks. But mm -hmm. we digress, we digress. So, yeah. So I think LinkedIn have done a good job on that, uh, which is great. The other little bit of breaking news, I, I, I guess we already knew about this, but we haven't discussed it, is this, this is slightly negative. Sorry, LinkedIn. Um, on the connections, on your connections page, you can't group message people anymore. Um, so right. you, you can't, you know, click the boxes and somebody – posted something in a group somewhere and and I, I kind of answered the question because they went why did they take it away so anyway that i mean that's old news but just in case and I, in a way i am pleased about it because the group messaging was starting to get abused you know so because yeah. the group the group messaging now not talking about the previous way everybody's included and therefore everybody gets the replies as well. And it's all, you know, uh, it's like being on Facebook Messenger, for example. Yep. And therefore, I think it's good that they've taken it away in, in some respect. Yeah, I, in, in some respects, it's good. I, I, won't, I won't bore everybody with it now, but I have the horror story of horror stories about oh. group messaging that involved, I don't know how many messages because it was just such a huge group involved. But for like two hours, it was just, I mean, my, because at the time I was getting um, email notifications of messages and, and, and everything else. And it was, I just, I got bombarded for two hours and Out it was just, uh, it was, I mean, it's like, okay, there's, there, there's definitely something wrong here, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it could be potentially abused. And, and although this, the person in question here actually wasn't abusing it, they just didn't know any better, no. but anyone who, 
who clicked on reply or I forget what it used to be. It, I, I think it used to default to reply all and you had to specify reply or it was something like that. But everybody was, um, but everyone was replying all basically. So every, yeah. it's just like, just stop. And then <laughs> just adding, put make it add. you can add, yeah. it got to hundreds of people in the thread. Yep. It's like, yeah. stop. Get me out of this conversation. Right, yeah. So, all right, yeah. very good. Okay. So let's go on to your point, Bob. Uh, yes. Yeah, so my so my one uh, so my one point for the week is just the importance, and this is going to be a real basic one, but it's it's really important. I'm not going to go into the mechanics because we could spend the entire hour here, or however long we end up going, just on just on LinkedIn profiles. But um, just having having a properly built out profile, and I mean beyond what. LinkedIn says that you're an all-star or whatever the uh, the uh, top level is because as we all know here, just because you get a um, uh, an all-star in that little graphic that builds up at the side of your uh, of your profile there doesn't mean that you have a filled a, a completely well filled out profile in in any respect. So in my in my corporate training that I do at, at People Links, I've I've lately been describing it like this, and and it seems like that it's hitting home a lot better now that I'm describing it like this than than what I used to do, which is just saying you know having a profile that's built out well is very important. <laughs> um, what I'm what I'm saying now that is is think of it like the foundation of a house. So you really need to have that foundation built before you can start, you know, putting in the walls and putting in all of the nice stuff and, you know, basically building out the house. But not only that, but actually selling the house as well, which is what we're doing in social selling. So you wouldn't, uh, although sometimes this happens uh, depending on how, how hot the market is, but generally speaking, you don't start selling something before, you know, the, the foundation built is, is built and everything else is built around it. Yet there's a lot of people on LinkedIn who are, who are trying to social sell with these very incomplete profiles, which, for a variety of reasons that we always talk about here all the time, just doesn't make sense. I mean, if, you know, if if I see people sharing all this great content about whatever industry they're they're in, and then I go to their profile, and there's nothing in their profile, it doesn't even have a photo or 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 anything like that. At that point. In my mind, the person just just isn't that trustworthy. Maybe they've got someone else posting all this content for them. I mean, you know, all all sorts of questions come up. Whereas when you have a built a properly built LinkedIn profile that supports everything that that you're saying and um, you know builds you up, and as I say, at People Links builds you and your company up as 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 that go to uh, gal slash guy, as I put it, you know the 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 expert the thought leader in whatever industry that that they're in um you know when you have that support especially when you have it built in so that it's very easy for someone to get in contact you just as a result of looking at, at their profile you have you can start a lot more conversations get a lot more people into your funnel and you know take them through and close business and that's you know for 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 all the talk we do about building connections and, and and doing all the other things which is important and i'm not saying you know don't do that and don't be genuine when you do that but this is all about making money and and and, and serving people with great products that will make you and your company money basically right i kind of use the analogy i grew up in the restaurant business my parents owned a restaurant but is my father's pet peeve. If he walked into a restaurant and there were dirty tables and nobody was there, you know, they didn't clean up and the floor was dirty. It's a bad first impression. Mm -hmm. so you walk in there and you see just a dirty floor and dirty tables and dirty dishes everywhere. Are you going to eat there? Mm -hmm. no. Same with yeah. LinkedIn profile. That first impression is everything. Yep. Yeah. Especially with the profile, the name and the headline. And I'm, I'm sorry, the photo the uh, the the name and the headline, especially the photo and the headline. I mean, those if if you don't have those, you know, properly done, that's just a killer. That's just an absolute killer. That's like the title of your book or a title of an article. Yep, same thing. Yep. 
Same thing. It could be the greatest book in the world, but if the title doesn't catch people's attention, they're not going to ever open the cover. Yep. I, and I think it's about personal branding, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. we're now also public uh, because we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, Google Plus, LinkedIn, and da 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 da. da mm -hmm. You know, and I think a lot of people don't realize that LinkedIn is the highest index site on Google. If people Google your name, the likelihood is, unless you have a very common name, um, and yes, there are lots of common names, I appreciate that, but mm -hmm. the likelihood is you are going to appear on page one of Google search. Your LinkedIn profile is going to be there, and yeah. people will find you that way. Um, of course, they can search inside LinkedIn too and get there quicker potentially, even though People don't realize, actually, it's me that I'm representing. I might be working for a company, and I might even be, there will be some people out there looking for jobs. Yeah. And, and some of their profiles are appalling, even when they're looking for jobs, you know, because still a lot of people have this view that LinkedIn is, you know, a recruitment site. It's to have your, have your resume there, and you hope you're going to be found or you can apply for jobs. And it's so much more than that. And I think that that is the beauty of how LinkedIn has evolved over the years, where you are able now to develop a better brand persona on LinkedIn mm -hmm. than you mm -hmm. can really compared to anywhere else. Right. I had an I interesting agree. question similar to that. It was in my LinkedIn group on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love how you can do that? That's funny. In my LinkedIn class, I had a LinkedIn group and nobody would have any conversations. So I put a Facebook group and they're like chatting away. So That yeah. is interesting. That is interesting. That kind of goes to the mindset of people using, um, using LinkedIn versus people using Facebook, which I think is one of the reasons why LinkedIn tried and kind of failed, but yet they're still trying to figure out how to work in some of that um, LinkedIn kind of feel and flavor without being being Facebook, basically, because yeah. they obviously don't want to be Facebook. But I mean, but to capture to capture some of that essence, and I mean, God, I don't know if I have an answer to that. That's 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 a very difficult um, question to answer. Well, the guy asked the question. He said he has a LinkedIn account. His company is paying for his premium account. Okay. They said, right. can I open a separate LinkedIn account for my personal business that I'm starting? And I said, no. No. And he actually emailed LinkedIn support and they came back and said, you own your profile. You are the person. It's not your company. Even if they're paying for it, it's you. We want everybody to be individuals on LinkedIn and then company pages are company pages. But mm. Right. I said, yeah, but you know, if you if you're, have your own business and somebody searches and they see two of you, and some people use the same profile picture in two profiles, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's actually a good point. I mean, if if you are going to go that far, you should at least have two completely different different profile pictures. Yeah. But yeah, you know, they read through it and they say, this is the same person. Why yeah. are there two professional images here? And your boss is going to find that. Right, yeah, especially if your side business is pretty closely linked to 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 what you do in your full time gig too. I mean, now now now, if you do like what we do, and then you make candles on the side or something like that. I mean, you know, something this is something completely different. Maybe I don't know, but 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 if they're closely aligned, then no, don't. Well, I've seen people completely different like that. They have a right. candle maker business, and they have their consulting business. Right. Or they're actually working for a company. So it gives yeah. you a really weird image. Like, okay, this person is doing two completely different things. Mm -hmm. if you hire this person as a consultant if they had these two completely different images? No. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I'd, I'd look, it's about transparency, isn't it? I mean, if you're working for an organization and you're also running a business uh, on the side, you've got to be honest with them. <laughs> And, right. and you've got to be transparent and say to your yeah, boss, definitely. hey, I, I want to start my own business. I think I can do, are you okay with that? It's going to be on my LinkedIn profile. And either you've got that trust and relationship with your team or you don't. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think, and certainly I believe that LinkedIn themselves as an organization do this, you know, 
people they want people to be entrepreneurial because those are the kind of people they want to employ right right and therefore you know organizations nowadays can't expect that they own everything about the person that's working for them people are multitasking these days because we've got the internet you know there are lots of people that are working in the daytime and selling eBay stuff at night. Right, right. <laughs> so um, I think, yeah, transparency is the key. Honesty, you know, trust, 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 trust. And if you've got a profile, if you've got several profiles, what are you doing to trust? Yeah. You know, yeah. no one's going to trust you. See, yeah. That kind of happened to me when I was working full time a couple of years ago. I was doing online marketing for a software company. And I got the book deals for the ultimate guide to LinkedIn for business and ultimate guide to Twitter for business. And I was up front. I said, I got these two book deals. I'm going to be writing two books. And one a friend of mine that came, he wrote 26 books for Microsoft. So they were like, okay with him writing books on the side. Right. And my boss said, sure, fine. And then like two years later, the CEO comes and goes, you're not dedicated to your job. You're not focused on your job. You're trying to set up a separate business on the side. I said, I'm working full time. I'm doing a great job for the company. I wrote two books. I know yeah. my mother was sick at the time. I was taking care of her. I was like, when would I have time to do consulting on the side? Mm -hmm. Right. Plus, it was in my contract. It said I could consult on the side unless it was with a competitor of the company or one of our partners. Wow. So it got really ugly after that. Yeah, and th this is you know this is interesting because be, wh why what is it all about fear? You know, people are in fear. And unless you have that, you know, you got the right values in the organization and that trust is built up, then there's always going to be a disconnect along the line somewhere. But yeah, here's yeah, a hundred, I, hundred million dollar company that's afraid of me. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, cool. it's a hundred million dollar company that just wants to have total and complete control over their employees' lives, I think is what it came down to. It's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. So yeah, the world is changing. They've yeah. got to wake up. Has joined exactly. If you have questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Or right. If you want to jump into the seat and ask any questions, feel yeah. free to. Yeah, and, and you don't have to do video either. You can just come in via audio. So, so don't worry about uh, having to show yourself. So, uh, Ted, what is what is your uh, one thing? I guess we're going to call it that. Your one thing for the week. I think the one was that question that came up actually. Okay. I was going to talk about LinkedIn advertising, but I think that one question that comes up all the time for me. Can I have multiple profiles? That's that's a very good question. A very good point. Um, there was actually one guy, and I've only seen it happen once. So. Um, he actually came up with a persona for himself and 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 he was a, a lone wolf so it's not like he was he was in a full-time type of thing but he did like one thing that had to do i think it was like facebook or something like that where he used like a uh persona that was a bit more outgoing and i mean you know what you would kind of expect on facebook and uh, that was for more like small business consulting and things like that. And then he had like a larger business consulting thing that he did primarily on LinkedIn. Or I'm sorry, yeah, on LinkedIn. And and for that, he was like himself. And um, it's like, okay, so you, I mean, it's, I mean, I didn't want to say it was schizophrenic, but um, <laughs> I honestly didn't know what to think about that. And it's like I said, that's the only time that I've heard of somebody saying that. I don't know if you all have seen that in your travels or not, or if this guy is like truly unique, but, um, but I guess, but I guess what I really wanted to ask about was like the overall concept of someone possibly doing that and what you think about that, because obviously I wouldn't do it and I wouldn't recommend it. It's people do business with people they know, like, and trust. If you have multiple profiles and it looks like two completely different people, I wouldn't mm -hmm. trust that person. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I come down on it too. But I'm sure that some people have thought about, you know, you know, use building and using that separate persona for for certain things. And I'm sure other people are doing it too. It just it, it doesn't seem like that. It's done a lot. Yeah, I, I haven't come across it, and I think you know uh, the Brits probably have a tougher time trying to make up different stories about themselves. But the, I the trouble is with personas or trying to portray yourself different in a different world is that 
you've got to then show up like that in that different world. So you actually have a personality disorder because you then have to behave and talk to people in that way too. Right. And so that's going to be tough to keep that up. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you could, I don't know, the extreme would be being an introvert on one side of your business and an extrovert on another side of your business. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's more schizophrenic than anything. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend it. I, yeah. The important thing is to be authentic, be trustworthy, build trust. Now, what I thought you were going to say was, as you started that conversation, and, and this could be an interesting one we could talk about perhaps another week, is um, when you are identifying your ideal buyer is to develop an avatar persona of that buyer you know, so that you describe for yourself in detail who this person is, you know, are they male? Are they female? What age are they are? Where are they working? What even down to their family? What are their hobbies? You know, right, yeah. So Buyer you personas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like That's what I thought you were going to talk about when you said. Yeah, personas. no. Yeah, no. It's just I mean, just with all this talk about profiles and everything else. I mean, that was a bit more unique of. Yeah of of a situation and and i definitely agree that buyer personas would be a great topic and uh and 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 let's talk about that um Another next week, week. Yeah, yeah yeah i think we can definitely get into that too especially because um sci-fi funk has has got a couple of questions here yeah, let's um deal with those. so uh can i ask you guys about uh patron pay Patreon or whatever, however that's pronounced. Sorry. So, so you could tell, I, I don't know a lot about crowdfunding. Oh, uh, he's calling in. Okay. <laughs> sounds good. We're going to get you in here, Steve. Hang on. Hi guys. Steve. Hey, Steve. hey, how you doing, man? Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you too. Hey, and you too. Social selling is something uh, close to my heart. So Brilliant. Good conversation. Good, good. Very glad to hear that. So um, the thing that particularly interests me at the moment, if you're not interested in talking about it, no problem, is um, one of the main things I do is art related. So okay. social selling when it comes to art, in this case, it's 3D animation and music. Um, oh. it's, yeah, it's quite an interesting animal. Um, and I was wondering if any of you have any experience in raising funds for that kind of endeavor. Now, are you doing it, uh, I mean, it depends on how you're doing it. So uh, who would be your clients for this is probably the uh, biggest question I, I would have. There are several ways of, um, several types of clients. The ideal would be fans because under Patreon, let me talk about Patreon if I may for a minute then. Um, you say I'm going to produce a certain amount of content per month, in which case you ask for a monthly um a fee if you like to see that content or you say i'm going to produce this and i need this amount of money between you lot to actually make it happen it's similar to kickstarter but it's not as tight as kickstarter because in kickstarter unless you raise the funds you don't get a penny <laughs> yeah. well yeah that's that's always good to hear um okay so so fans are going to be one market so i guess um social selling is probably a little more uh, I'm I've seen some B2C applications where social selling works well and 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 tell me if you guys would agree or disagree with this but it seems to work much more better in the B2B aspects of things so I don't know if you're going to be selling your animations to like uh, production houses or or, or direct to companies or marketing agencies or or something like that. I would say that a social selling type of thing would be better in that type of environment, whereas the um, whereas the uh, direct to consumer thing with the fans maybe maybe Patreon is 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 where we would you want to uh, you would want to go with that, gentlemen. What do you think? I, I uh, Steve, I'm sure you're familiar with Simon's Cat. Simon Scat. So Simon's cat. 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 Simon's cat. You know the the guy Simon who draws the little cartoons with Simon on YouTube. Oh, sorry, <laughs> not come across him. Sorry. Okay. Well, Simon, he's he's a UK guy. He creates these uh, little animations, drawings, 
uh, with this cat story. And he's been going for a few years now, very successful. And he did a crowdfunding um, about a year ago or 18 months ago. And I'd highly recommend you get in touch with him and find out because he was going to create a film, uh, which he's still working on now, which is about a color film. He was doing black and white, a color film about going to the vet. And mm -hmm. that's in production. I put a little bit, I put like a few coins into it just to get <laughs> like the book and stuff like that. But um, it'd be worth getting in touch with him to find out how he's done it. And I can't remember which platform he used. I haven't come across Patreon, so maybe he didn't use that platform. But he might be able to give you some direction on that and some experience how it went for him. Thank you. I should look him up. It's very Simon's interesting. Cat. Yeah. Simon's cat. Yeah. Simon's cat. Cats are everywhere. My God. I, I mean, it just, I was just <laughs> only watching a, a, a two minute clip or whatever it is this morning because he releases one about every month or so. And they're, they're quite cute if you like cats. Mm hmm. <laughs> but am I picking up you gentlemen are much more interested in the B2B world? Yeah, base. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably a good way to put it. Um, it's, it's, it's been my experience that, um, that everything that we teach in, in social selling is good for B2B as well as what I would term a uh, large ticket, big decision B2C. So that would be like real estate. That would be financial consulting, insurance, like those types of things. Um, yours is definitely a little more, uh, it's, 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 it's definitely interesting. I mean, and, and, and I mean that truly in a good way, but, um, B2C with social selling in, uh, that's... Well, uh, let me stop you there then, if you yeah, may. I mean, I, I'll go to where you are, because you see, what I did is I, I developed a skill set that could apply to B2B or B2C. Okay. Is, given the choice, wouldn't you rather do your passion projects rather than oh. uh, take on clients? Yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, but if we, if we have to go the client route then, I mean, the kind of things I could offer, the sky's the limits, but as an example, would be um, kind of uh, moving logos, um, you know, uh, animations, custom animations, but they're, they're not going to come cheap because if you know anything about animating, it's an incredibly time consuming process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, Steve, I, I think you and I should have a chat offline because I do a little bit, a bit of whiteboard animation. Okay. So very simple stuff, no, nothing like what you're doing. Um, but I've just had a look at your profile on LinkedIn and I definitely think you should be growing what you're doing because animation, video, I mean, you obviously know is, is growing and growing every single year and it needs to get, it will get bigger and more people need to be looking at animation as a way to sharing stories and interesting stories. So let, let's connect on LinkedIn and we'll have a chat offline. Okay. And, and that's uh, what social selling is all about right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Steve, you do Snapchat? No, I, I looked at it, but it's one of those things I thought, oh, not another social media platform. And I, I didn't go down there, you know. And I haven't really got into it, but Joel Com is really into it. It's really taking off and it's all about telling stories. So Yeah. Yeah. I, I, with you though, I'm like, I can't take time to learn one more thing. Yeah, right. another platform. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose if I'm, I could do, but I guess I, I'm kind of sold out on YouTube. Are you guys into YouTube at all? Yeah, yeah sure. YouTube is powerful. It's very yeah. powerful. I still think, and I value your opinion, that at this point in time, it is probably the best referrer for actually generating um, click-throughs to your content. Would you Have you found that to be true, or do you have, I'm getting some frowns. Well, <laughs> no, not at all. I think it's a mixture. I think video is massive for click through. Uh, I think there are some people who are doing it really well at the moment. I think the, the site that's winning is Facebook, <laughs> hands down. You know, I mean, when I look at content on Facebook coming in my newsfeed, every other bit of content is a video. Yeah. Um, I'm not True. seeing that on LinkedIn. I'm not seeing that on Twitter. Facebook has video down to an art. And the, they were the first ones who started doing the automatic play without sound. Um, and 
So I think, yeah, you and unfortunately for YouTube, if you post a link on Facebook from YouTube, it's not autoplay. It's just another link that you've got to click. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I think, I think it has to be a blend. Video has to be a blend of being shared across many different platforms, um, so that people start engaging more with video content. And I think in the B two B world, it's it's slower than in the consumer world in terms of engaging with it. But it's it's definitely going to happen. Of course, you know everybody needs to have YouTube videos on their on their YouTube channel. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. But oh, oh. The Google rankings too. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Google. Google still loves video when it when it when it comes to search results. So so you can't forget about Google either. But yeah, Facebook is big without a doubt. But, but don't you say, don't you think that um, yeah, I'm going to use a, uh, a a word here? I probably shouldn't, but they're a little bit evil in that they are deliberately organizing things that they don't want you to move outside of Facebook. Now, are you, mm. are you thinking that? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas absolutely. YouTube, yeah. yeah YouTube's a lot more generous. You can you can link anywhere now on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Send it off to your website. Send it off to somebody else's website. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's their it's their sandbox, you know. I mean when yeah, when, I mean Facebook. You in. Yeah, you're right. Facebook. When this was years ago, I predicted that Facebook was the new internet. Wow. Think wow. about that one. Wow. wow. <laughs> it's too That's bad you it. couldn't have monetized that quote. That 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 yeah. was fantastic. But I I really believe Facebook was going to be the new internet when it first started off, and they are moving in that direction more and more and more yep. and you got facebook live now you got you know virtual reality whatever is going to be next um they they have got a mission and they are they are pretty much on target for what they're doing there you know i think they're a great role model for a lot of other sites out there but i agree with you it keeps people in the ecosystem and that's what they want yeah right? yeah because why because they want it for the advertisers, right? Yeah. Yep. So the the advertisers will be happy when people are sticking on their side. It's all about stickiness, right? I saw something that Snapchat has more engagement than any other social platform now. That's why I'm like, wow. And big Gee. brands have some incredible stories. They tell stories in these little Snapchat things. Mm. Is it? Is it? Um, let's. I think. Is it? Is it still six seconds, or do they increase their time? It's a bunch of shorter videos, right? Yeah, but I'm I mean, sure the length but, is. yeah, yeah. That's what I was asking because but you I know stack them up that. and it tells stories, and then they have all these animation tools in built in now. So you, it's amazing. It's like, I, I think it's time to really focus on yeah, it right now. Yeah, I know exactly. It's like one of those things where it's like there's this whole phenomenon go going on that I just I have no idea what it is, and I know that if I look at it, I know I'm going to get hooked, and it's like. Do I want to take all this time I, to get hooked on it? You know, I tell you what, it's going to it's it's for our age group. It's going to be tougher to get hooked on it because you, you're really going to want to be happy to take lots of photographs of yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the ecosystem is about that. I mean, I had a look at it the other day because my stepson was playing with it and he he was creating all these different faces on there. There was like a dozen different faces you could create from your own face yeah um and it's it's pretty awesome what they've done there but it means just taking lots of pictures of yourself so how does that work out in terms of trolling because you think a periscope the most people don't use periscope as it was designed most people face the camera at them and they yeah. invite people then to comment upon their appearance in a right, right yeah so does that happen on snapchat well, just look at how the big brands are using on Snapchat. That's what impressed me. These huge brands are building stories on there to engage people. Mm. Okay. So that's all. I haven't gone too deep into it, but I was like, wow, all these huge brands are creating mm -hmm. live content like regularly. Yeah. Well, it, here's a suggestion. So the four of us should get onto Snapchat, connect with each other, and have, mess around with it, you know, and, have a play yeah, with it. And go <laughs> down that rabbit hole. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Bob and has got better things to do. <laughs> no, I just don't have enough time. But um, but I, know, I, I, know. I, I I actually just posted a link 
that's like a very beginner's guide to, to using Snapchat. The guy who did it, his 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 name is Carlos Gill. He was at um he was at LinkedIn yeah. for about all of ten minutes, and then um he went somewhere else. I forget where, but he does this um this uh, Snapchat training, especially Snapchat for business. And, and and when I say I keep meaning to get in, into Snapchat, but I don't have time, it's 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 looking at his stuff and trying to do his stuff is what I'm talking about mainly there more than anything else. But it's like, I mean, be, especially because of my background, because I was in uh I was in journalism and I was on radio and I was in TV news and, and stuff like that. And I still love doing video stuff. I just know that if I start this, it's like bye bye world. You know, you know, I, I will, I, I, I will not see sunlight for six months or anything like that. And it's getting in to be another beautiful summer here in the bluegrass and I want to go outside. So, but you know, I'll figure it out somehow, but um, Snapchat is definitely fascinating. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. I, 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 at, at a at a base level, I really do want to learn how to use it more effectively in business. So, that, okay. may I? I don't know if you want to wrap up. That's fine, but you do lead me to another question here. Yeah, please. Yeah. So, um, okay. All these different media, social media platforms. Have you, or do you, find a way of directly knowing? how each one is being monetized? If so, how? <laughs> By the, the owners. <laughs> By the owners. Yes. The yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, and then you have the direct monetization, monetization versus indirect monetization, and it just, it gets, it gets, it gets kind of sloppy fair, fairly quickly, unless you're, uh, unless you're deriving absolute direct sales as a result from people clicking in through these platforms, basically. Right. Because it's about yeah. building relationships. Yes, that's yeah. what it's all about. Really take action, especially with your price. I'm sure you don't have a $99 package for what you do. Mm -hmm. Me? Cool. Yeah. Cool. Me? No. no. Yeah. No. <laughs> like we don't sell our consulting services through social media. We send a link says, hey, sign up for my $1,000 coaching program. Gotcha. <laughs> Is that what you three do then? Do you coach? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we coach and train. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Nobody wanted to hire us, so we had to go out on our own. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all battling for the social uh, selling scraps that are on the streets and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so, so do you guys? Uh, do you go down the traditional um, sort of long copy landing page? exciting people as they read down no. no i don't i don't now no. not no. for what we do yeah i mean we're 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 a little different in that because we're actually kind of walking the walk and talking the talk at the same time we're we're using all of the things that we teach and 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 so that means a lot of social engagement that means a lot of building of reputation via via online channels and things like that with you know as as we put it with the goal of taking online conversations offline so all of that long landing page stuff i for 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 lack of a better way to put it is actually kind of replaced by all this other stuff that we're doing and because we're not transactional in in terms of our sales our goal is to get conversations out out of these things it doesn't really lend itself that well to doing that that type of thing okay so so for you guys then blab is a pretty good potential selling platform yeah i yeah, well, it's, it's, they get to know like and trust us they get right. to see us and hear us and yep that's it. Yeah. So that, you can't convey this in a long sales letter. Right. And people don't, I mean, do people read long sales re letters anymore? I mean, it was just, you Yeah, know. they do. These guys that saw the high ticket prices. Yeah. The high, the longer, high ticket stuff. Yeah, there. you're right about that. High ticket stuff, you're right about. Yeah. You're right about Those it. courses that people say 2000 bucks for, that mm -hmm. those guys say the longer the letter, the more sales they make. Because they answer every question. And some people actually read everything. But isn't the point of those long copy things to excite the person so much that they can't take any more in and they just want to know the price? Yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's what I know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 How long do I you, scroll before you'll tell me how much this is going to be? You don't really right. get to know the price unless you sign mm -hmm. up for something. Yeah. 
Some people do that too. But wait, there's more, you know, I mean, yeah, all that type of stuff. Yeah. It's like an infomercial, I guess you could say. I mean, I, they, they, they probably have infomercials over in the UK, but they're everywhere here in the U S and yeah, it's, it's the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. You can avoid a lot of them in the UK because um, unless you're an avid cable viewer, um, uh, that's not really the style here. Not that I've come across anyway. Okay. Yeah. It's a billion dollar business here. Multi billion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Denmark 98, who watches TV? That's an excellent question. I, yeah. I sure as heck don't, uh, don't, don't watch a ton of TV anymore. I mean, Patrick I mean, worked at that software company. We worked there together. Oh, okay. Okay. We got the boot too. We both got booted from that company. Oh, <laughs> all right. Survivors of corporate America. We did a good job, and they kicked us out. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll make way for Patrick if you like, um, and Michael. I, I'll follow you on Twitter um, at least, and we, we can connect there. Yeah, great. I'll I'll send you an invite on LinkedIn as well, if that's okay. That's cool. That's cool. All right, guys. Fantastic. I'll show you this. All right. Thanks, Steve. Cool Thanks, Steve. Steve. Thank you for joining. We appreciate it. Great, uh, great conversation. Hey, Patrick. If you want to jump in and chat with us. We got a couple minutes left here. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I think all three of us are, are getting him. There he is. Hey guys. <laughs> Patrick, nice to meet you, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Hey Patrick. Hello. He's a oh, CRM you're... expert. I do. I work oh, at Microsoft. Cool. I'm a technical solution specialist at Microsoft in Denmark. Oh, good for you. That sounds like it's a lot of fun. So Patrick found a job using just social media after he was looking. He didn't send out his resume to anybody. Wow. Wow. Hey. That's, that's good for you. That's How long did it take, Patrick? Like two weeks? Not one resume, not one cover letter, nothing. My I, This job I had was completely by social media. Good for you. Good for you. Man. Actually, the guy who hired me saw me speak at a conference a year before. And then he was working at Microsoft and then he just contacted me and he's like, I need a guy like you. What do you, would you like to come for a job interview? And I was laid off from the company I was working at before. And I was like, sure, I'll come up and have a talk. And he contacted me through LinkedIn and, uh, and I went up for an interview and I was there three interviews and I got a job. So. Excellent. So you're still in Copenhagen? Still live in Copenhagen. I'll take you outside in the backyard. See how nice it is. There we go. Yay. Oh, nice. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Can't complain. So my backyard <laughs> grass is jealous of your backyard grass. Is it? It's nice. Yeah. My wife oh, mine's horrible right now. So <laughs> We're not allowed to have grass in California unless it's a smokable kind. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's good to see you, Ted. It's been a while. So yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah. Glad it's working out for you. Something's working. So I'm partner up with these guys. We're starting a site called Social Sales GPS. Okay, nice. So there's gonna be nine of us total. So nine of us doing gonna... doing video coaching at various times of the uh, day and night, and uh, chat chat. Bo I mean, uh, message boards and all that type of stuff. It's gonna be a, a truly an, uh, interactive type of site. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about all the changes on LinkedIn, though? I, it kind of scares me away a little bit. If I was gonna be honest. Like oh, we, we never have, talk about that. We never we talk about that no, at all. We never. We're, we're <laughs> never <laughs> happy. <about Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we are joking, obviously. Yeah, um, we have been. At, um, uh, some of us at, uh, at at Social Sales GPS have actually been talking to uh, LinkedIn about their changes. What's been good? What's been bad? Mostly mm -hmm. on uh, on the bad side, unfortunately, and. Um, and uh, they are starting to make changes that we are suggesting. So, um, you know, I think what happened just from an overall standpoint is, you know, when a company gets that big, you get a lot of groupthink involved, you get a lot of layers of bureaucracy involved, and, um, you know, people may not be talking about and talking to other people and just, you know, bad decisions getting made basically so um hopefully well, the spammers were just taking yeah, over. and spammer yeah and there was abuse on 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 the user end too in 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 quite a few circumstances and i mean we've always used the uh, pendulum analogy here where you know things were in the middle and then things went this way and now they're this way and we're trying to bring things back to you know a good center point here if i can make a suggestion if you have an in there um, I've tested this myself, so I know that it's true. But you can you can actually hack 
the user interface or through the user interface using JavaScript. So you can inject code through the console on Chrome and you can actually override the security for following people where it doesn't actually prompt you for their email and stuff. And I've seen a person who actually got 200,000 followers on LinkedIn in one month using this hack. Oh and my I, God. It's these kind of things that I just, that actually piss me off because they should just know better. <laughs> so, uh, it kind of ruins the platform if people can actually, if people hello, can actually, <laughs> hello, yeah, people, she's a star now. Stuff like that. Yeah, she's my. Mm -hmm. So, but every every platform has its issues. I have. There's a ton of issues with Twitter. I, I you know so. Oh, everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's just, and and I mean, as 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 they get bigger, more and more people target them, and more and more people are gonna are gonna find things. Hey, puppy. So. Uh, <laughs> Yep, it's yeah. a tough one. I wouldn't want to own a software company. I would not either, or or an online platform where where you're trying to gain a, a massive audience. That's just a. a but also that matter. they're so popular, so of course there's tons of critics there, and you could do yeah, nothing absolutely. right most likely. But they've yeah, done a ton absolutely. of things where you're just like, is this Facebook yeah. app or is this LinkedIn app? I, I get so confused sometimes, you know, like. Uh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> so you get too popular, people start hating you. Yeah. 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 Haters yeah. gonna hate. Yeah. Yeah. Haters gonna <laughs> All right, guys. I'm gonna go eat some dinner. Thanks for having me. Okay. Right. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Thanks for stopping bye -bye. by. Bye. Okay. Very good. I think we're gonna end on that note because it's uh it, it's 11:53 and uh and I've got another call coming up here pretty soon, so I gotta prep for that. So um. Thanks everyone for, for showing up either live or, or listening to us on video or on audio or however you're doing it. Again, we're here every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern. That's why it's called Social Selling Wednesday. And uh, hopefully we'll get some of the other coaches in here pretty soon uh, who are participating with us in Social Sales GPS. So thanks for joining us and see everybody later. Next week will be Blue Stripe Day. Next week, oh. Blue Stripe Day. Okay. Keep that in mind. Oh, God. Okay. That means I got to buy a blue, blue Stripe shirt. I don't think I have one. <laughs> but I'll, I'll get that done. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, cool. See what happens when you get a couple people on that way.